Good morning, viewers, and welcome to today a morning service. And uh, before we share the word of God, let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you once again for this precious gift that you've given us, the gift of life. Thank you for my uh, listener, whom Almighty God you have taken care of, you have protected, and you have brought us all safely to this new week. Now, this uh, moment, dear Lord, we surrender ourselves to you and pray that you speak to us through your word. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, my viewers, my name is Venerable Salome Leipa, and Jesus Christ is my personal savior. I'm happy uh, this morning to share the word of God. We continue with our series, uh, Redeeming Our Families and Restoring Them Back to God. And uh, we know that uh, God's intention is to heal and bless the institution that he formed himself called the family. And you are a descendant of Adam and Eve. We just had last Sunday that um, curse came as a result of their disobedience. And uh, today, I want us to see that uh, we are a subject of God's blessings. You see, before the, uh, the, the, the couple disobeyed God, God had made promises. And God makes promises that he will accomplish. And in this case, uh, even though the, 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 the Adam and uh, Eve disobeyed, but again, God started the redemption story through um, his servant Abraham. And uh, you and I are subject to those blessings. Abraham and Sarah, and we are heirs of those blessings. Isaac came as a son to Abraham, and he came to the scene of that family, and he really was a blessing to that family. Again, when Jacob, the son of Isaac, came uh, to the scene, he blessed the family of Abraham. And we see that um, when we, um, we become people who fear God, people who revere God, uh, God blesses us. After Jacob comes Esau or Esau. You see, when uh, Esau came, he treated the things of God lightly. He did not obey God uh, fully. He was a man who had visions in his heart. You know, instead of repenting when he fell, because definitely each one of us commit sins. And even Jacob, even Isaac, even Abraham, they all did. But then they repented. They came back to God. But uh, when it came to Esau, he decided that he was not going to, um, to, to, to ask for forgiveness. So he went ahead committing even up to forfeiting his birthright in Genesis chapter 26 and verse number 34. It is states that Esau was so disobedient. You remember that they had been warned not to intermarry with the people from other, other nations. But Esau, uh, when he grew up, he married two Hittite wives. That is what the Bible says in verse number 35 of Genesis 26. And the Bible says that, that, that verse 35, they were a source of grief to Isaac and Rebecca. So these two Hittite wives were a source of grief. Why? Because they were descendants of the Canaanites. So they were not of the Jewish origin. And um, there was a curse already uh, on the Canaanites. And you see, there are generational curses. There are also generational blessings. So literally, Esau was bringing a, a generational curse closer into his family by disobeying his parents, by disobeying the law of God, by doing things that were contrary. And this is why the Bible talks to us about against 
uh, getting yoked with un non-believers, people who don't believe in Christ, because they will drag us with them, and we may find ourselves uh, doing things contrary to what God wants us to do. So when uh, you come to Jesus, or when you came to Jesus, you began to break the curse. When you learned the word of God, you got uh, into a better position, and um, uh, you stood up in, um, better to be able to fight, to break this uh, curse. Um, in Exodus, God shows his great concern about the family of Jacob, who was called also Israel. He had a concern for the family of Adam and Eve, and about the family of Abraham and Sarah, and even Isaac, and even Jacob. And today, he is concerned about your family too. Why is he concerned? Because the family is not just a bearer of generational curses, but a bearer of um, uh, blessings uh, from one generation to the next. And so some of the gifts and the talents, natural talents that we see and the strengths that um, we have are inherited from our parents. They also inherited from their parents and those ones uh, inherited them from their previous parents. So it goes on and on and on. And so we carry a part of the traditions, part of the talents, the gifts that we inherited, that were inherited from other generations uh, before. And so here we see people who um, inherited or worshipped idols, did not worship the living God. These women became a source of problems in the family of um, Esau and Isaac and Rebekah because they were people who did not want to see uh, the living God. They worshipped idols and this brought the enslaving of the children of Israel. God used an adopted man uh, called Moses to bring salvation to both the Israelites and some of the Egyptians who followed them through great miracles that were done. It doesn't matter whether you are adopted uh, into the family or you have inherited because you will not inherit, uh, inherit the traits of the adopted parents, you will keep those traits that come from your biological parents. And most Egyptians, though they saw the great deeds of God, did not turn from their bad life, from their bad ways. And that's why the Muswahili say, you keep trying, it becomes difficult. But you see, God designed a way of escape for the Israelites. And uh, again, blood had to be shed. I, we did uh, uh, learn the other Sunday that uh, in order for us to break these curses, we need the blood of Jesus Christ. We need blood. And so we see in Exodus chapter 5 and verse number 3, 6, 7, 12, and 13, uh, it talked of the blood. And so so that your family will not be under the curse, you must kill a lamb and put the blood of that lamb on your downpost, on your doorpost. And this was to keep the angel of death from attacking the family that is in that household. And uh, so um, the blood reversed the curse on all who obeyed and applied it. And so, friend, when we are talking about the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ has the power to reverse, the power to destroy the curse, uh, the curse of alcoholism, the curse that um, of of you know perennial poverty, the curse of immorality, the curse of you know many bad things that we may have inherited, and so I want to encourage us today, child of God, that. Um, you will save your family by applying the blood of Jesus Christ in your life. It is not the amount of money that you have. It is not about the many people that you know. It is not, a, it is not psychology. It is not your parenting skills. 
It is not even the many inspirational books that you may have read. My friend, it is only the blood of Jesus Christ. That is what we need today. And we can only apply the blood of Jesus Christ if he has any meaning in our lives. Is he anything to you? Does Christ mean anything to you in particular as an individual uh, this morning? The Israelites knew that the blood was the key to their family because the doors that had the blood, the angel of death did not come in, but he crossed over, he passed over them. And so the, the sole key to your family today is the blood of Jesus Christ. During Nehemiah's time, my friend, as he rebuilt the wall of Jerusalem, and opposition became too much, and the man's strength was going away. Nehemiah knew where to touch. And in chapter 4 and verse number 14, he says, Don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome. And fight for your brothers, your sons, and your daughters, and your wives, and your homes. Hallelujah. Because family is you know, where we come from. That is where we derive our identity. And I can nearly hear this Nehemiah uh, urging them, fight, brothers, fight, let's fight. Let's fight for, you, for our families. Don't allow the enemy to destroy them. Why family? Because it is the closest to a man's heart. You know, you'll hear men talking about my family. You'll hear women talking about uh, my family. Children are the most prized possessions that a man or a woman can ever have. You know, you will not allow them to perish. You will not allow them to be destroyed. So, uh, and even the Bible says, uh, the, the Lord says, I will punish up to the third and fourth generations uh, for cons uh, ancestral sins, you know, for those that disobey God. God hates disobedience and all its fruits. He hates it with a passion. And uh, we know that the penalty of sin is death. There is no other, uh, you know, we cannot give anything else. And uh, when we become, when we learn that, um, um, when we come to this knowledge, it uh, it naturally becomes a little difficult for us to sin because we don't want to die. We don't want to see our children inherit death. We don't want to, them to, you know, to, to get lost. We don't want to uh, just become statistics, but we want to make a difference in our lives, in our families. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And the very innocent blood of Jesus Christ will pay the price of our foolishness, our carelessness, and our disobedience. And uh, it's only when we allow it, when we apply it. And uh, so, friend, as I wind up, uh, the word um, of the Lord in Numbers chapter 23 and verse 8, uh, this is what the word of God says, How can I curse? those whom God has not cast? How can I denounce those whom God has not denounced? Verse 20, I have received a command to bless. He has blessed and I cannot change it. Friend, once we move in, we position ourselves to receiving blessings for ourselves and for our families, nobody can curse that which God has blessed. We continue again next Sunday. Uh, may God bless you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this moment that you've given us once again to listen to your word as we continue learning about uh, redeeming our families. And we know we will overcome because you've said we are more than conquerors and we will overcome uh, the enemy by the blood of the lamp, Jesus Christ himself. We thank you. May you protect us and bless us throughout this week. May your peace reign in our lives. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.